Um, I noticed you're wearing a floppy hat. As, did you buy that in Mexico? <laughs> I bought it in Punta Cana, where I was when you guys were covering all the things that matter. Yeah. <laughs> and I haven't washed my hair in like a week. So nice. I figured it, you know, and it, and I, of course, I wanted you to ask me about the, the stupid hat, Harry, or I wouldn't of have course. worn it. And I thought it would yeah. be a nice excuse to talk about Punta Cana. So, you know, I mean, it, it does seem like the hat is a thirst trap. It's definitely a thirst trap. Well, I don't know if you want to call it that on this pod. <laughs> so what, what, how was Mexico? What did you do? Punta Cana. Harry, what's, it's Hispaniola. It's one Punta of the, it's, it's in the Caribbean. Oh, Caribbean. I thought you were in Mexico for some reason. No. That's what I thought too. I, I would not go to Cana. Mexico right now. It's because Jordan told me you were in Mexico. Okay, yeah. Blame it no on me. No telling what else, what other <laughs> falsehoods he's put in the newsletter. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, somebody somebody fake texted me that Bill could actually hunt arrowheads on your ranch now, Harry. <laughs> oh yeah. No, that's coming. We can we, we're gonna have some access this summer. We gotta um, do that. We gotta do that. Well, my uh my plumbing's is just destroyed, so I'm at Millicent's house for <laughs> My before i go to chicago destroyed. yeah but you leave today or tomorrow i leave today just right after this ah um, jordan why don't you uh what were your impressions of uh of cbc and what 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 do you think was the most like engaging uh element that you heard there uh probably bart's bart did the keynote speech and I thought it was, I thought he did a great job. He didn't sugarcoat it. He just said, you know, this is the new normal, slow to no growth. Um, <laughs> and they were flat last year. Craft uh, has averaged 1.2% growth over the last six years. So he basically said, you know, the days of double digit growth are over and I don't see them coming back anytime soon unless something changes. I thought one of, the best stats he had was around tap rooms and brew pubs because that's kind of the bright spot for craft. Regional craft brewers are down 2%. Microbreweries are up only 1%. And tap rooms and brew pubs collectively are up 7%. But he showed that most of that growth is for new kids on the block. Mm -hmm. So brew pubs and tap rooms that were founded in 2018 or later were up 20% last year. Outposts founded before 2018 were up only 2%. So, you know, it's basically a, a new restaurant coming into town. So that's not a viable long-term, you know, business option for craft. It, you're hot in the beginning, um, but <laughs> yeah. after four years, uh, your trends might, or the traffic might slow down. Um so some of the options he throw, threw out for like getting back to growth were, you know, obviously opportunities and on-premise um, that still hasn't got back to where, you know, on-premise was in decline before COVID, but it's still not back to where it should be, uh, you know, just based on the model he had projected. Mm -hmm. um, and then obviously, you know, reaching new consumers for craft with, women, people of color, uh, craft has the lowest percentage of female drinkers and BIPOC drinkers of any beverage alcohol category. So, you know. <laughs> well, I think, uh, I think 20 years of acting and dressing like you're in Mumford and Sons. <laughs> and smelling help. like you're in Mumford and Sons. <laughs> yeah. That might what, do something. The yeah. handlebar, uh, the little twirly mustache and, you know, really, I think, uh, uh, what was the insult dog's name? Triumph. Triumph, Triumph the insult yeah. dog. When he was on Jimmy Kimmel, I think that was kind of the beginning of the end. Like that. <laughs> when it, when he was going to GABF. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. GABF. And, <laughs> and everybody we, he was interviewing and mocking yeah. looked like the same person. So, yeah. <laughs> right. I mean, he could just continue on with the same, you know, insults yes. and jokes. I, because he was interviewing the same person over and over and over. <laughs> right. Um, and then for innovation, you know, he didn't, uh, didn't dissuade, I guess, uh, brewers from getting into 
you know, spirits. Um, but he also said that craft should just kind of get back to the basics and return to, you know, how craft started and not chasing the hot mar hot market, but just doing what they thought they could do best, mm -hmm. what they thought they could do uniquely. And that was what he kind of encouraged brewers to get back to. Um, and I think that's a good point because craft brewers trying to do F and B's and some of, you know, at least malt based, uh, flavored malt based beverages. That's for the big guys. They have created this pure, you know, malt base that they can make any flavor out of. I don't know if craft brewers can can do that yet. They don't have the the capabilities or the money to, you know, really, really invest in that like the big brewers can make it. So um, it was kind of refreshing to hear Bart just lay it all out and not have a rah rah. It, I mean, he was still trying to, you know, rally up the troops, but he laid it out and just said, okay, this is, this is how it's going to be unless something changes. So yeah. I like it's it. really hard for them to, like you said, to make really good seltzers and FMBs um, at a small scale like that. It yeah. takes, uh, you know, of what, what I've told, I'm, I've never done it, but it take, takes a, uh, it, there's nowhere to go. There's nowhere to hide bad flavors. It's, it's all there right. for everybody to taste. And, um, but, uh, interesting. Yeah. A dose of reality for the, for the craft brewers. Yeah. And then didn't, uh, I mean, for people who may have missed it to your point about the minority you aspect, mean people who were not in Mexico, <laughs> yeah, people who were not in Mexico, aka Punta Cana, like me. Yeah, for for the people in the back, aka me. Tell us more about the the new. Is it Black Brewers Guild? What's it called? The National Black Brewers Association. So it's like NB squared A. Okay. NB two A dot org. I think. Yeah. Um, uh, yeah, we're we're gonna have Garrett on. Uh, maybe next, next week. week. Yeah. Uh, which will be cool. I've never, we've never had Garrett on, on here. So that'll, That's I just point. want to ask him some cooking recipes. He's the best cook on, <laughs> on Instagram. Uh, um, next time well, we're due. I, uh, I went to St. Louis uh, for the, uh, I snuck into the AB meeting. I had a, uh, a Bud Light vest and a Budweiser cap and sunglass, these sunglasses on. And, uh, uh, a lot of it was off the record, but what yeah. I can say, I mean, it wasn't anything like earth shattering. They just wanted to keep some things private, but basically the gist of it, of the, uh, is like, Hey guys, you know, we need to get the word out there that nobody has spent more on drunk driving and underage drinking. Nobody has spent more with folds of honor to help soldiers, families of soldiers who have died or wounded in battle and now first responders. Um, you know, think of all the canned water during hurricanes, think of uh, all the charities we've supported. And, you know, so they're uh, going out and being vocal. And I thought it was interesting because they really pointed to some distributors uh, in the South who have, who were real proactive early on in the Bud Light debacle, uh, getting out in the trade and, you know, talk to consumers and just remind everybody of all the community support that the local AB distributors have provided over the years. And um, I think it was interesting that AB is relying on the distributors really heavily to help them get out of this. Mm -hmm. uh, as we saw in the latest week data, um, it hasn't, you know, keep in mind the data is always two weeks behind, mm -hmm. but it still haven't really reached bottom. Uh, although, um, I've noticed on, I've been looking at it obviously online and it has definitely died down. You don't, you know, there's really just a, a couple of major, major players uh, like Tim pool and uh, Matt Walsh and uh, Megan Kelly. And, uh, and then of course, Joe Rogan. So if you take those four players uh, you know, every time they post anything, it's millions and millions of people. Um, Wash and Pool have seemed to come off of it. Now they're focused on Miller Lite, although I don't 
I don't think that is a, a big as big a deal. Even like Joe Rogan yesterday was like, this is stupid. Yeah. You know, I don't, I don't, you know, it's, it is annoying. It's an annoying ad, but it's not like egregious or anything. So um, I thought, I thought, honestly, I thought Molson Coors handled it better out of the gate, more aggressive, uh, you know, Adam at Molson Coors just saying, Hey, uh, whatever you think of ad is fine, but you know, coming after our employees is not cool. And we're not going to put up with that. And it was a much stronger, I think, response than what AB had initially. So I think Molson Coors might have learned a little bit from from AB's mistakes there. Um, but uh, but yeah, that was that was the gist. And you know, uh, I don't know, man. It's still uh, I, well, they gave they gave out Bud Light vests as a gift. And uh, I got one and I decided to wear it home just to see if anybody would give me shit about it. Uh, you made it way home from St. Louis and only one person it was. And I knew it was going to be the guy he was yeah. sitting next to me. And, and I was happened to be sitting in first class because, you know, upgrades. <laughs> and uh, he was just obnoxious getting on the plane. He, he like asked this person in front, are, are you executive platinum? Cause only executive platinum can be in this line. Like that kind of guy. Oh my and God. It, and it turns out, guess what? She was executive platinum, yeah. you know? So uh, <laughs> and he gets on, he's like, Oh, are, are you really wearing that vest? Like, <laughs> and I was like, yeah. He goes, do you work for AB? And I was like, no, I just like the brand. <laughs> and he goes, well, I would never drink it, even though it's a, even though it's better than Coors Light. And I'm like, well, why wouldn't you drink it if you think it's better? <laughs> and, and, and then we just left it at that. And then I put my headphones on. He was still talking, but uh, <laughs> that's all I have to say about it. But um, well, I so and I want to go back to Miller Light Gate, but tell me what was the mood among distributors? The scuttlebutt? Are they saying it's getting any better or? No, I didn't hear anybody saying it was getting any better. Mm -hmm. And so, you know, that was a week ago. Um, the, the distributor was reaction was very mixed. Either mm -hmm. distributors came out of that saying, well, that was a waste of time. It was a load mm -hmm. of bullshit. Or they came out saying, okay, well, they've got a, at least a, they've acknowledged it and they've got a plan, uh, you know, but uh, I think a lot of people thought it was too little, too late. Um, but uh, Brendan, Whitworth, he was yeah. very serious the yeah. whole time. You know, he was engaged. He was, it, it was, combat. it was combat Brendan. <laughs> um, and, you know, he said, I'm going to stay until the very last distributor leaves the reception. I don't care if it's, you know, two in the morning, I'm going to stay. And, and, it, and, it, and he did like, I left, went to my room, wrote up a, a couple of stories, went down, ate at the Roos Chris bar came out and they were still, I could hear them upstairs oh, wow. at the reception. So it, it was like three hours later, they were still going. So he was um, letting distributors take shots at him in his bulletproof yeah, vest. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Took his shirt off. Come He's on. like, take your best shot. I know you need to get it out. I still yeah. think they should get three sticks up on a TV commercial about it. Right. Oh, that, I mean, honestly, that would not be a bad idea. <laughs> no. It'd be better than my idea, Jen, which was Spuds McKenzie. Bring him back. Hey, which, put yeah. them both. Put put three People sticks like that and idea. the dog. Yeah. yeah. No, which but, brings um, us. To, go ahead. Well, I, yeah, I would. What, what is your take, Jen, on the uh, the Miller the Light, Miller Light uh, so that ad? I mean, that just dropped this week. And for people who don't know, um, that was from the good shit, bad shit ad that they had back in March for Women's History Month, who certain yeah. people in certain corners of the internet decided to take issue with. And it's the same thing insofar as all this information, disinformation with the Dylan Mulvaney thing, like, oh, how did MC not, you know, learn from AV when actually this ad ran weeks before? And I think it was digital only, but anyway, um, yeah. you know, I think it's the same people kind of trying to, they feel like they've got a little power online trying to rally. And then you've got like Fox news playing into it too. I saw they did their bits on it. And some guy is saying like, Oh, it's kind of the same thing. It's not the same thing at all. No. Like, so I have no issue. We'll just put, I have no issue with transgender people. They have nothing to do with me. You know, they're just trying to live their lives. That's fine. But you know, the argument goes on the right or not even just people who have issue with that promo if you want to call it that that you know this doesn't espouse traditional american values so in the case of miller light you're telling me that 
wanting to have your beer ads look like softcore porn is in line with traditional values, right? <laughs> like it's the opposite thing. And I don't think, I mean, obviously as a woman, I'm like, this is stupid, but I think it's the online trolls just trying to bring the rest of the people who would argue for this thing along. I don't think they're going to bite though. I actually reached out to a couple of retailers, obviously again, this week, super, super recent. They haven't seen anything, but you know, with the Dylan Mulvaney thing, it took at least a week for it really to get traction. So, but I, I I don't, but who knows this day and age? I mean, we didn't think this Bud Light thing would. And you said Harry um, a couple of times that this could have easily happened Mm -hmm. to Molson course. Yes. I think it's going to show that people can get angry about anything. I think Mm -hmm. for certain people, trans rights are, you know, just, yeah, it's, it's third rail. It's it's the third Mm -hmm. rail for some people. And yeah. for what Molson Coors was trying to get to in uh, the good shit, bad shit, that's just, you know, admitting fault for past commercials. I think it is interesting, though, that they kind of bred this consumer with, with these commercials. And now uh, those people yeah. are the ones getting upset. So uh, it's, yeah. it just highlights how they're trying to kind of turn back their their consumer and bring in new people bring in new people yeah yeah reinvent so but it's funny too because when you look in the comments it's like oh no more miller light it's yingling all the way i'm like i got news for you buddy (laughs) god i've wanted to get into these i'll be like they've got a jv what are you gonna drink now paps it's ass eating season for paps yeah yeah i mean uh, the, uh, the funny thing is about the bad shit good shit thing is when it came out i remember saying you know i thought it was funny but also i was like this is so millennial i could just see like because millennials it looks really good on paper but it just looks like a logistical nightmare like really you're gonna ship all this paper and like cut it up and make mulch and you tell it's like the marketing department. It's like, this is a great idea. And the people that actually had to execute it were like, oh, for fuck's sake. We can't even <laughs> fulfill our orders. <laughs> just kidding. Yeah, got that just come on. You know, whatever. Uh, and of course, now that people are saying, now they're hoarding the that kind of POS. Yeah. And now it's gone up in value. So the opposite has happened. Now it's being displayed. And it's, uh, <laughs> you can't engineer this kind of stuff. It's crazy. Uh, well, Good stuff. Um, but, you know, I, I will point out that a distributor, when when the whole Dylan Mulvaney thing was blowing up, a Miller distributor did send us an email. It's like, yeah. I hope this good shit, bad shit doesn't blow up, you know, in our faces. And it was just a matter of time. <laughs> yeah. Oh, yeah. Well, good. Well, uh, anything else that I'm missing? I, I think, think that's so. just all I wanted to cover for this. Yeah, it'll be interesting to see which brands over the summer fill the gaps of you know, Bud Light. We did a story on Kona yesterday, rebranding, and actually some of their are are big wave and some of their marketing is, some of their commercials are really good. They don't have any controversial topics whatsoever. I I talked to Andy about that. Okay. Andy Thomas at the show. And I was like, man, you dodged a bullet. His was really (laughs) the only presentation that didn't even touch on that at all. I was like, he goes, yeah, I'm just over in my own little space over here. Just cruising. Yeah. Making waves. Yeah. Waves. Making waves. AB Craft has done really well done over okay. the past month. So some of the, yeah. yeah, I mean, and 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 if you look at the data, right, like Big Wave is up double digits year to date, but it's accelerated in the latest four weeks. And I didn't look at the price per case, so I don't know if there's any pricing going on there. But I wonder if they're getting some fly balls from Bud Light. Uh, who knows? You know, it's a premium uh, water. What what I've noticed here in Texas is, I mean, obviously Coors Light and Miller Light are, you know. The replacements for Bud Light, but Yingling Flight has mm-hmm. become really yeah. big for mm-hmm. the Mick Ultra substitute. Mm-hmm. And now with Oro, Heineken Silver, yep. it seems like you know there's some some brands coming in that can really get a head start. On- I mean, this is this you couldn't. This is a rare breach in the Michelob Ultra armor that finally these competing brands might have a cudgel to get in to that, that high, that segment of super premium light beer that nobody's been able to break so far. So Oro came along and silver at the right, exactly the right time. 
And uh, because remember, I mean, we were all saying on this podcast, good luck, guys. You're not going to break. Nobody's been able to do it so far. I mean, St. Archer, really? I mean, so uh, maybe you're right. Uh, Yingling is just on fire. They just entered Missouri. They couldn't have picked a better time. Nobody was luckier in this whole thing than Yingling. Yeah. I mean, come on. Totally agree. And unbelievable. Harry, at the in St. Louis, you know, when you talk to distributors, did they seem more concerned about stopping the bleeding on Bud Light or man, y'all are, this is screwing all my other brands. Yeah. And no, uh, I mean, it was a mix, but, but Bud Light's the main concern. Okay. I mean, there there's people talking about cutting routes. If you had told me a few years ago that AB distributors are going to be talking about cutting routes, that's, I, I would have thought you were nuts. That is, uh, that's kind of a last resort, but you you gotta uh, you gotta match your sales force and your delivery force to match your volume, especially with labor issues, right? Yeah, totally. Yeah. All right. Well, good. Well, thanks, guys. I am uh, about to hop on a plane to Chicago, and uh, so all right. Well, thanks, and I'll uh, shout at you later. Cheers. Yeah. Cheers. Uh,